Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 5. This tutorial will focus on accounting for decommissioning costs. This tutorial has two major learning objectives. First, we'll review the accounting for the recording of future decommissioning costs or site restoration costs, also known as asset retirement obligations. You may be familiar with this term from another course. Second, we will review accounting to settle those future decommissioning costs. This tutorial is based on the Cosmo Mining or CML Limited problem, so please ensure that you've downloaded the correct file and have previewed the data and requirements. The first requirement will be to prepare the necessary journal entries to record the purchase of the mine on January 1st, 2020, and adjust any decommissioning obligation at the end of the year. A good place to start is with a summary of the data in this example. As the data indicates, the company purchases a mine or an asset that has a value of $65 million. It purchases it for $65 million. The lifespan of the mine is determined to be 30 years. Now at the time Cosmo purchases or acquires the mine, it's estimated that the decommissioning costs that will be required to restore the site back to acceptable conditions will be $50 million. The actual decommissioning costs end up being $45 million in the year 2050. And the applicable discount rate used in this example is 7%. The reason why we're given an applicable discount rate is because we have these future decommissioning costs. And as with other types of transactions and situations such as bonds and notes and leases, anything that requires future cash flows will require us to do some present value discounting. What we must do then is determine the total capitalized value of the mine, which consists of two things. The mine cost itself of $65 million plus the present value of those future decommissioning costs. Using your calculator, we would take 30N, 7 interest, or IY, and $50,000 future value. There is no payment, 0 PMT, will give you a present value of $6,000,000. $568,356. So the total capitalized value of the mine, including the present value of the future decommissioning costs, is $71,568,356. Now we are going to record our journal entry at January 1st. We will debit the mine asset for that amount that we just calculated, the $71,568,356. We will credit cash for the amount that was paid to acquire the mine. And we will credit a liability account, be a long-term liability, obligation for future site restoration for the $6,568,356. And so this is to record the purchase of the mine, including the present value of future site restoration obligation or decommissioning costs. After recording the purchase at the beginning of the year, at December 31st, we're going to record interest expense and basically is the result of something called accretion of the site restoration costs. What we have here is an obligation that has a balance of $6,568,356, but at the end of all those years, 30 years, this has to equal $50 million. So we have to keep dumping credits into this account. What we will do is debit interest expense for the interest portion of that balance. So if we take the beginning balance, 6,568,356 times our 7% interest rate, our first year interest expense will be 459,785. There's no cash for this. So basically the entire amortization of the difference is um, spread over the 30 year lifespan. And it's not an even amount either because this will be uh, the interest will be calculated on uh, an increasing balance. So debit interest expense, credit the obligation for the future site restoration. Note here that at the end of each year, management should revisit the estimated decommissioning costs and the appropriate interest rate. When the mine was acquired, we have determined that the estimated costs are going to be 50 million. At the end of the first year, it may be discovered that the estimated costs were too high or too low, in which case we would have to make an adjustment to the obligation amount and then proceed accordingly. Also, it's possible that the interest rate could change. Right now, the company assumes a 7% discount rate that can change. So any changes are accounted for prospectively. Okay, basically, these are all estimates, changes in estimates. 
And so those prospective changes will result in changes to the PPD asset and de decommissioning obligation. And as I said before, they would be adjusted to the required new carrying value. And then interest expense would be calculated on the revised balances in subsequent years. Now we'll proceed with requirement two to prepare the journal entries to account for the decommissioning obligation and associated depreciation for 2021. We'll assume that the company depreciates the mine straight line over its estimated mining life. What we're going to do at December 31st, 2021, we'll continue to calculate the accretion of the site restoration costs by debiting interest expense and crediting the obligation for the future restoration. In this case, the calculation now is the original balance of 6568356 plus the 2020 interest. That gives us $491,970. So that will be the associated debit and credit. Next, we will record the depreciation expense for 2021. Now, you might be wondering, why is there no depreciation in 2020? Well, if you refer to the data and read it very carefully, it says the mine was not operating until January 2nd, 2021. So it's when the asset is available and ready for use that depreciation is calculated. So even though the asset was purchased on um, in 2020, it wasn't operating until 2021. We're going to debit depreciation expense and credit accumulate depreciation for the mine based on 71,568,356, which is the capitalized value. The data says that there is no residual. And we are dividing this now by 29 years. Now, if you read the data very carefully, it says that at the time of acquisition, the lifespan of the mine was determined to be 30 years, but that is from the date of acquisition. So we have to take one year off because the mine was not operating in the first year of acquisition. So basically 30 minus one is 29 years, giving us 2,467,874. Now we can proceed to requirement three. And that will be to record the journal entry to uh, record the actual decommissioning costs and the derecognition of the mine 30 years in the future. At December 31st, 2050, which is 30 years from acquisition, the accumulated depreciation on the mine will have built up to what the original capitalized value was. So 71,568,356 will credit the mine asset and debit accumulated depreciation in order to decommission the mine. Then we're going to record the settlement of the decommissioning cost to restore the site. Over the 30 years that we have been accounting for the mine, the obligation for the future site restoration liability would have built up to $50 million as indicated previously with that T account. That means we have to debit the account for $50 million to get rid of it. The data says that the actual costs that had to be incurred to restore the site were $45 million. And the difference between the two happens to be, in this case, a gain on settlement of the decommissioning costs. So we're going to credit the gain of $5 million. It's conceivable that it could have cost $55 million instead of 50, and so we would have a loss on settlement of decommissioning costs in that case. So let's close with some key points to remember. Any provision for decommissioning costs, or also known as site restoration costs, asset retirement obligations, etc., must be accrued based on legal and constructive obligations of the company. In many of these cases, the company is required by law and regulation to restore site to its original condition or better or some defined standard that represents a legal and constructive obligation to the company. Now, as those costs may be incurred far into the future, discounting of the obligation is appropriate. So we'll use an appropriate discount rate as we did in this example. And the value of that initial obligation is added to the cost of the relevant asset. So in our case here, we had the mine plus the present value of the site restoration. Each year, interest is calculated based on the balance of the obligation and added to the balance of the obligation so that by the end of the life of the asset and at the time the costs are expected to be incurred to restore the site or decommission the site, the balance in that obligation account will equal what the original estimate was. Each year assets are depreciated and interest expenses recorded. At the end of the asset's life, the balance of the obligation will equal the amount estimated to complete the decommissioning costs. 
and upon settlement of the obligation, a gain or loss may be recognized, and that's what we had in this example. So this concludes tutorial five on decommissioning costs. As always, please refer to your notes and course materials for additional examples and information.